find the laughter around you, know how much better you feel. Feel it. Say to yourself, man, this works. I really feel good. It's everywhere. If you go to a gym, there's humor there. I work out almost every day. There was a guy at the gym today. Every gym, almost every time I work out somewhere and I travel all over the world, there's always one guy in the gym that I call butt crack man. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> That's the guy who walks in with these baggy sweats. Everything's fine until he bends over. You know, then it's like, whoop, there it is. Whoop. And you're looking at this thing and it makes me want to get my Amex card and just swipe it, you know? You just... <laughs> That's funny, it's declined. Give yourselves a big round of applause again. Thanks for the energy. Thanks for the energy. How much better do you feel right now that you're laughing? How much better do you feel that you're laughing? That's my point. That's my point. What you are going to be hearing right now, people, is not brain surgery, it's brain adjustment. The biggest disease in this country is unhappiness. And the reason why people are unhappy is that they're focusing on what they don't have. They're not appreciating what it is that they do have. I'm going to be offering you right here what I call common sense success strategies that will not only take you to a better place in business, but in life. And in my view, that's the ultimate success. I'm going to share what he had to say with my wife and my friends because he is hysterical and he's right. Feeling good is the fuel that drives motivation. Think about it. It's absolutely impossible to stay motivated throughout the day if you're harboring negative emotions or if you have a bad attitude during the process. It is. And the reason why people in business consistently fail over and over again, the reason why you may be having trouble achieving your goals, it's not because of the challenges. It's not because you're not smart enough. It's because somewhere along the way, positive momentum ceases. You see, and the reason why positive momentum ceases is because the individual is focusing all of their energy on what isn't working, wallowing in the problem, and not leaving any room at all in that brain of theirs for positive thoughts to seep through so they can come up with healthier alternatives and solutions so they can move forward throughout the day and deal with the next challenge that will inevitably follow. Feeling good is the fuel that drives motivation. So you tell me, Steve, how is one supposed to feel good when life is bombarding you with this stuff day in and day out? Yeah. Drugs. I'm selling product in the back of the room, by the way. <laughs> it's amazing the feeling that you get when you laugh. I asked you before, how much better do you feel now that you're laughing? You feel great. And it's all around your household as soon as you wake up. We have married people there. How many married people have it there? Oh, there's humor there. <laughs> is there come on, there's humor there. I mean, humor is a key to a successful marriage. Absolutely. But if you were to read Oprah in Cosmopolitan magazine, they would tell you that the key to a successful marriage is to understand your partner. Oh, really? Are you kidding me? Under you can't understand your partner. The only thing you have to understand about your partner is that there are things about your partner that you will never understand. If you understand that, you will have a better understanding. Do you understand? And if you're married, you know what I'm talking about. I've been married to my wife for 25 years. Till this day, I can't understand why I have to get in trouble for dreams that she has. <laughs> Guys, you know what I'm talking about? You wake up, good morning. Don't good morning me. Well, what happened? I just had a dream that you had an affair with another woman. <laughs> Guys, really, your response should never be, really? What'd she look like? <laughs> I 
think we can all agree that today, too many people, man, start their days off in bad moods or low moods at best. I mean, soon as they open up their eyes, before they even take the covers off, they immediately start focusing on the grueling day they had the day before. All the things that didn't go the way they wanted to go. All the fires that weren't put out. Man, I know people, and I bet you do too, maybe some people in this audience. Soon as they open up their eyes, before they even say good morning, they reach over to the nightstand, they grab their iPhone, and they start looking at all the messages that need to be answered before they even leave the house. That's insane. Then they start internalizing all the things that have to be done on the coming day. And they can't understand when they're going to work, their energy level is down here. Think about what you're trying to achieve. Think about the label that you have of being the best. To maintain that, your energy level has to be cranked. First of all, why would you want to start your day focusing on what isn't working? Why would you want to do that? Why do we do this to ourselves? Because it's part of the human condition. We always focus on our lack. We do it all the time. But what I'm asking you to do is to get your shift together. In other words, as soon as you open up your eyes, rather than focusing on what isn't working, focus on what you have. Focus on your assets. Focus on the things that you appreciate, the things that you are grateful for. And I don't care who it is or what it is. Maybe you're thinking of the person lying next to you. Maybe it's your children, a particular event that's coming up. Maybe it's the bird singing outside your window, the dog lying by the side of your bed. We could all find something to be grateful for. Why wouldn't you want to start your day focusing on what you're, what, what you're appreciating? Why do I want you to do this? Because starting your day with an attitude of gratitude simply makes you feel good. Feeling good is the fuel that drives motivation. It's uh, great to have somebody who's not only informative, entertaining, and funny, and smart all rolled into one. Way to go, Steve. Humor is everywhere. Look at your kids. How many people have kids? Oh, my God. You know, we, we're, we're getting ready to go to work, and we let precious moments go by. And we can't understand why we're all stressed out. These are precious moments. We look at our kids as annoying little people that we have to take care of before we go to work. They're funny people. Except for preteens. Preteens... That's a frightening category, man. People have preteens in this audience, you know what I'm talking about? Preteens are scared. I mean, preteens are like homeless people. You tell them what to do, they walk around the house mumbling. I didn't even do nothing. What are you picking on me for? Every time something goes wrong, I've got to get in trouble all the time. This is patient worse than living in a prison for crying out loud. You're probably not my real mother and father anyway. It can't be my mother and father. And you look at them and you say, what are you saying? Nothing. <laughs> can't even breathe. Watch how, watch how your kids grow up to be just like you. My son thinks he's a comedian. Not funny. When he was younger, when he was in elementary school, people, I'm serious, he was making people laugh, but he didn't know when to stop. He always thought he was on stage performing. We had a problem. He was getting in trouble. One time he came home from school. I said, hey, how was school? He said, good crowd, good crowd. I said, don't get smart with me. He said, whoa, don't worry. I don't want to confuse you. He even does impressions. First day of school, the teacher said, so young man, what's your name? And he went, well, what's it to you, lady? <laughs> teacher gave me a call, Mr. Rizzo, we have a problem. Your son thinks he's Jack Nicholson. And I'm like, what do you want me to do? He was so funny, kept the crowd energized. I'd go back and see him again and again. And don't tell him this, but I'd pay a lot of money to see him. Nothing can help you to enjoy what it is that you do more than a sense of humor. It is the instant mind shift. It helps you to enjoy yourself. And unfortunately, enjoying ourselves is something that most people leave by the wayside today, especially when we're setting out to achieve our goals. You know what it is that you're doing, the pressure that you're on in sales. Are you kidding me? When the ratio of no's outweigh the yeses, that's when a stress level can get a little too intense. Self-doubt, overwhelm, fear, anger can become real dangerous mindsets. Without you realizing it, enjoying yourself becomes secondary. Think about what it is that you're trying to accomplish because that's when it has to become primary. Studies have shown that people who make a conscious choice every day to enjoy themselves during the process of whatever it is they're trying to achieve are more creative, they're more productive, they're able to bounce back a lot faster from life's challenges, and they're able to find solutions to problems a lot quicker. 
Now, having said that, I would wager any amount of money that most, if not all, of the people in this room, when you're writing out your plans and your goals for the future, short term, long term, nowhere on those lists do you ever include enjoying yourself. That totally blows me away. You want to get your shift together, use your sense of humor, use the power of your thoughts to shift things that, are, that you're grateful for rather than wallowing of what you no longer have. I want to thank you very much for having me here. I had a wonderful time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, folks. Thank you for waiting here as long as you did. Thank you so much. Take care.